I hope the role play went smoothly for you. If it didn't, simply refer to the written instructions found in the introduction to your leader's guide. Before we begin session three, let me give you another example of the power of disciple making and spiritual multiplication. My wife, Laura, became a disciple maker and led our daughter, Emily, to Christ. Laura took Emily through a call to joy and a call to growth, and Emily developed spiritual growth skills and learned to share her faith. Well, a young lady named Erin Dalen visited Emily's youth group, and because Emily had grown spiritually, she reached out to Erin, unlike some of the other high schoolers who just stayed in their cliques. Emily became her friend, led her to the Lord, and took her through a call to joy and a call to grow. Well, Erin started sharing her faith with her mother, Suzanne, and her mother became a Christian. Laura had previously trained Terry Hobbs to be a disciple maker, and she personally followed up Suzanne. Suzanne started sharing her faith with her mother, Phyllis, and she became a Christian and was taken through a call to joy and a call to growth by another woman, Mary Freeman, who was also trained to be a disciple maker. And it goes on and on and on and on. Another innovative feature of becoming a disciple maker is found in session three, Why Make Disciples? It visually reinforces the spiritual multiplication produced naturally by Christian disciple making. Please turn to page 16 in your Becoming a Disciple Maker Leader's Guide, page 16. Notice that your group members will be looking at photographs only, while your Leader's Guide has photos with boxes under each picture, so you'll know what to say each time your group members turn their pages. It's basically a PowerPoint in book form. Okay, for the next few minutes, you're going to be my small group, so please turn to page 9 in your Becoming a Disciple Maker Student's Guide, and I'm going to lead you through this highly visual session. You remember the What to Say material is in your boxes found in your Leader's Guide, okay? So, again, turn to page 9 in your Student's Guide, and you can follow along as I deliver this material. You can see on page 9 that there's a globe and it says, go and make disciples of all nations. Now when Jesus made this statement, he could have said, go make converts of all nations, but he intentionally used the word disciples, which are disciplined learners. The next page, page 10, new believers are like newborn babies. They need personal spiritual care. The next page, but all too often, churches are guilty of leaving their newborn believers to fend for themselves. They settle for merely hoping these valuable new Christians receive the spiritual nourishment they need and grow and multiply. The next page, page 12. Instead of hoping new believers receive the nourishment they need, becoming a disciple maker's life-to-life -life equipping process ensures that each new believer receives the personal care that he or she needs. Paul knew this when he wrote, but we prove to be gentle among you as a nursing mother tenderly cares for her own children. Page 13, new believers and members need more than a handshake when they join our churches. People are not just looking for friendly churches, they're looking for friends at church. Someone to walk us alongside them, help them feel welcome, Introduce them to new friends. That was page 14. Next page, page 15. Answer their questions. Next page, 16. Equip them to grow spiritually. Next page. And on page 17, you can see that there's a foundation. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 3.11, For no one can lay a foundation other than one which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. When we become Christians, we have a wonderful foundation, which is Jesus Christ. But the next page, page 18, shows that we have a choice to see what we want to build on that foundation. We could either build with wood, hay, and stubble, like page 18, or we can build with gold, silver, and costly stones. Page 20, you see this young man standing on his foundation. He looks a little bit bewildered, doesn't he? He wants to build on his foundation in Christ, but he doesn't really know where to start. You know, we could deliver a bunch of lumber to his foundation, block, cement, all kinds of tools, but that really is not what he needs. What he really needs is the next page, 
page 21, he needs a discipler to help him build on that foundation using the blueprint for the building, which is the Word of God. Page 22, the discipler can help that new believer spend time alone with God each morning and look for insights, enjoy a prayer life, learn to study the Bible. Next page, 23. Memorize scripture, meditate on God's word, and use a spiritual journal. Page 24 says, These things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. New believers urgently need a dedicated friend who will show them how to become a self-feeder from the word of God and experience an abundant life in Christ. Page 25. That discipler can introduce the new believer or new member to friends at the church. And page 26, the discipler can make sure that the new believer joins a small group. Page 27, Jesus said, Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, multiplying 30, 60, or even 100 times. Page 28 shows a little tomato plant, which symbolizes a brand new Christian. Jesus said, these are the ones on whom seed was sown and good soil, and they hear the word and accept it. Page 29, Paul wrote, I planted, Apollos watered, but God caused the increase. We can help that little plant or the new Christian grow by giving it water. Now on page 30, you'll see two little tomato plants. Each one represents a new Christian. The one on the left is gonna receive personal attention, but the one on the right it's just going to be left out on the patio without any water or any plant food. Let's check the difference between these two tomato plants to see what happens in seven weeks. And by the way, these are not doctored photos. They're actual photos over a seven-week period. You see week number one, the new believer is receiving Christian friendship and receiving spiritual encouragement. Week number two, the new believer is benefiting from showing them how to have daily quiet times with God. But you see, the plant that didn't receive any personal care is just barely surviving. Page 33, week number three, the new believer starts recording insights. And look at the sad condition of the Christian that didn't receive any care at all. Page 34, week four, the new Christian on the left starts to learn how to share their faith and practice witnessing. Week five, they start relying on the power of the Holy Spirit for Christian growth. Week number six, they start learning how to memorize scripture. And week number seven, you can see there's little tomatoes on that plant. It starts producing fruit. If you turn to page 38, let me ask you a question. You see the little tomato plant that didn't receive any personal care at all. Is there any hope for that plant? You know, there are many new believers that have been sitting in a pews of our church for several years, and they've wanted to grow, but they've never really been shown how to grow. Spiritual growth seems like a mystery to them. But if someone comes along beside them and shows them how to grow, how to develop spiritual growth skills and become a self-feeder from the Word of God, let's see what can happen. Page 39 on week number one, week number two. Next page, week number three, next page. Week number four, week number five, week number six. In six weeks, that little plant that was barely surviving starts producing fruit. Jesus said, my father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit. Page 45. By the way, what happened to the first tomato plant that received personal care from the very beginning? After 14 weeks, it produced 52 tomatoes. You can tell that the tomato plant wasn't focused on looking pretty, producing leaves, but it was focused on producing fruit. Jesus said, other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, produced a crop, multiplying 30, 60, or even 100 times. The next page, 47. Our mission is to help churches train disciple makers to personally befriend and equip each new member with the needed ministry skills to enjoy a lifetime of spiritual growth and evangelistic multiplication.